There's a story behind the production of every piece of art. Those stories aren't always interesting, but this one is. An adventure in space and time. Technically speaking, not actually a Doctor Who story proper, but uh, definitely one that if you are a Doctor Who fan, I hope you have seen uh, because it's well worth watching. So in case you don't know, what this is, is this is a dramatization of the creation of Doctor Who in 1963 and of basically the William Hartnell run on the character. It's written and was executive produced by Mark Gatiss, who had actually been trying to get it made even before Doctor Who came back. Uh, so he'd been at this a while, and obviously Mark Gatiss has also written episodes of Doctor Who and acted in it. So he's clearly a very big fan and very passionate about this. And so we have all of the background players and the uh, and both behind the camera and the prominent figure, obviously, of those who were in front of the camera. The primary focus in this is on uh, Sidney Newman, who had the original creative spark on it, Barry Lambert, who was the first producer, not only of this show, but was the first female producer at the BBC, full stop, period. Wars Hussein, who was the uh, direct, uh, director of the episodes initially, and of course, William Hartnell, the first Doctor himself. Other people are also show up. Um, now, I'm not one to talk about the historical veracity of what is shown. I, I'm not going to say I don't care, because I kind of do, because what does or doesn't get changed like, can show the level of respect being shown to some people over others, because usually almost anybody's going to get shafted or fail to recognize, or some people over-recognize. But the thing is, I'm just not good at that kind of research, because I, I, it's not something that I, I have a particular drive to do. So if you're looking for what did they get right, what did they change about what really happened, I don't know. My understanding and what I've seen from other people's reaction is that this appears to be pretty accurate to the actual events. But I don't know what was changed. I don't know what was altered. I don't know what was left out. I don't know what was made up. So I am going to be judging this purely as a piece in its own right, not as a, a recreation of historical events, because I'm really kind of taking the thing's word on it that this was what happened. So it does a really good job of highlighting the contributions of all of the people who took part in this. Obviously, right off the bat, we have Sidney Newman, um, big, boisterous, takes all the oxygen out, out of the room, big ideas. And that's basically what he comes up with the idea of the Doctor and he tr and the original cast, and they travel through space and time, and it's educational. And he basically just plopped it down in front of Barry Lambert and said, I want you to produce it. Go make it. <laughs> so, like, the initial kernel wouldn't exist without Sidney Newman, but he didn't shepherd it. It's the core difference between, you know, when you see a film, there's a story by credit, and then there's a screenplay by credit. If you ever see that, there is a reason that those are sometimes two different things. One person might have come up with the idea, somebody else actually put pen to paper and moved forward on it. Not that Verdi Lambert was, was the writer, but she was on the ground working with the writers, the directors, getting the thing actually up and running, whereas Sidney Newman got to just spitball a, a notion, go, yeah, that's good, and then go off, do something else. But it also, you know, doesn't forget him because he gets brought back in at a later point, particularly, and this I actually really liked because in many ways, Sidney Newman is portrayed here as kind of, well, he's a bit out of place at the BBC because he feels closer to American Hollywood. He's not actually, he wasn't actually American, he was Canadian, but he, you know, has that sort of big boisterous, you know, thing going on. Whereas right at the beginning, we see how that clashes with the more, you know, buttoned up, formal atmosphere at the BBC. But it's very easy for characters like that to be shown to be sleazy or uncaring. And he's not. He's business-minded, and you get that he has that sort of 
schmoozy thing and he he's capable of just dropping sentiment if if things aren't panning out but at the same time it also shows a value in that because early on when they start shooting with Hartnell and Hartnell is very uncertain about what it is that's going on he comes in and he schmoozes he schmoozes with Hartnell and it it just smooths so many things over and it shows the value of what somebody like that can bring to a production. Because again, so often we usually see behind the scenes things, whoever is filling that role, the big schmoozy, blustery kind of person, they're usually a problem, not a solution. So it's kind of nice to, to acknowledge that, yeah, actually somebody like that, when deployed properly, is an asset to a production. So I like that. Verity Lambert, I, I like that a lot of emphasis was put on, yes, she was the first female director, but not a ton, I didn't feel like a ton of emphasis was put on the blockades in her way, more of just how she kept busting through them by force of will. There are some, and you do get, especially early on, the sense that some of the other people aren't respecting her, but and, like, that should be there. It would feel weird if it wasn't acknowledged. But it doesn't dwell on that. It doesn't make that a core thing in the story. There are basically a couple of parts when she first shows up and basically steamrolls the guy who was the temporary producer until the permanent one came in, which is her, um, because she doesn't agree with his ideas at all. And then when she needs the TARDIS design and the designer keeps putting her off and doing other stuff instead, she basically just sits down in front of him and goes, I'm going to sit here until you do it. And it, you can do it, and then I'll be gone, and then I'll leave you alone. And those are really the only two times that, that like, her not getting the respect she deserves come up, but they both encapsulate it really, really well. Similarly with Waris Hussein, played by Sasha Dewan, who's now the doc, no, sorry, now the master, and that's fun in and of itself. But he, um, you know, there are the acknowledgments of the discrimination towards him for being Indian. And that, again, is acknowledged in a way that feels organic, but also not lingered on um, or, or uh, overemphasized, since, again, that's not the point of the story. But it's just really well balanced. Like, let me be upfront. I think Mark Gatiss did better work on this script than anything else he's written for Doctor Who. I usually don't like Mark Gatiss penned scripts for Doctor Who. Um, some of them I'm okay with, but I, I don't really love any of them. This, I, this, I mean, this is great. And of course, that brings us to David Bradley playing William Hartnell. And aside from looking the part very well, like that, that's a big ask to, to try and capture not only what he brought to the part when he has to recreate scenes, but also to give the conflict of what was going on with the guy behind the scenes because there was a lot at play with him. He was an actor who was not in a great physical condition, looked older than he actually was, had been getting had been getting stereotyped as the same kind of role over and over and over again, was very much a working actor, needed to keep working, but felt like he was running out of steam. He didn't particularly seem to get or get on well with kids. Again, don't know how accurate that is, but that's how it's portrayed here and, you know, is skeptical about this thing, but then once he gets his hook into it, becomes very possessive and very protective of it. And it's, there's a lot to do there. There's a lot of layers because he could have just been the crotchety guy who keeps forgetting his lines and is kind of a hold up on the whole production because on paper, there were definitely times when that's what Hartnell was. But this never loses sight of the fact that he cares about the work, he cares about the craft, and it doesn't take him that long to care deeply about this character. And it even shows how some of the things that he's doing that annoy the cast and crew are, show how good he was at what he did. There's a point later on as the the behind the scenes staff is starting to shift. Like they have a new director, Wars Hussein has moved on and and Verity is, is moving on and the, a lot of the supporting cast has shifted and they're telling him what to do for the scene. He's like, no, 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 I can't, I can't do that because I have to move over here to use the switch to open the door because he was very insistent on always using the same switches continuously because he knew kids would notice if he was doing it differently each time. And Again, and also in terms of a, of a production like Doctor Who, something that runs for a long time, that 
moment and that bit, which again, not linger, like this thing really knows how to spend the exact right amount of time on any given sort of beat. So again, it's not lingered on, but it does sort of give you in a, in a snapshot the difference between people shepherding an idea to build it into something in the first place and people brought in just to continue something that already exists. And that's not to knock the talent of people who just come in to keep the, to keep the machine moving, but there is going to be a difference in terms of the, the level of commitment uh, that, and the level of investment that they have in it. And that's just a reality, and it's, it's well captured in that moment. And it's interesting as it goes on because it starts out largely as a telling of how this show came about, but by about the halfway point, it shifts to primarily focus on Hartnell and how playing the role and then having to leave the role and the reasons he had to leave the role impacted him, which that sort of overall shift can be difficult to manage, but it feels very organic here because after a while, he was basically the only one of the original core group of people behind the thing who was still there. Verity Lambert was gone. Warris Hussein was gone. The, uh, the actors who played Susan and Ian and Barbara were gone. And it makes sense that as he was basically the last member of the old guard still standing to have it shift and focus more on him specifically as it goes along, which is where it gets a wonderful melancholy feel because this whole thing could have been uh, honestly overly self-celebratory. Um, it could have, the, the wrong way to do this would have been from the beginning to treat it like Doctor Who was this brilliant piece of media just waiting to be birthed into the world. And, and every element that came in was just a perfect puzzle piece placed in there. But it doesn't do that because it never loses sight of the work that had to be done. Things didn't go smoothly. Things didn't go perfectly. So it's not overly self-congratulatory about it. And that is aided by the shift to the focus on Hartnell because it gives it a certain air of sadness and of melancholy because all the other people who moved on from the show, well, they moved on to do other things. Hartnell, again, as portrayed here, really, he, he didn't, he didn't want to have to give it up because he knew in his heart of hearts he wasn't really going to get anything after this. It would be, and anything he got would be eclipsed by this. He seemed to get that this was the last thing he was going to do that would matter to people. And <laughs> I didn't remember that this line happened in this film before I rewatched it for this. When he says, I don't want to go in his study to his wife, that hit me so much harder than when Tennant said it in The End of Time Part 2. Now, I know for some people that moment with Tennant works like gangbusters. It has never worked for me. It didn't work when it originally aired. It didn't work when I rewatched it since. It didn't work when I revisited it, you know, doing for the overdue Doctor Who reviews. It's not to say that it completely falls flat, but it never connected with me as much as I know it wants to. And it sure as heck didn't connect with me like this does. Because there is such a stronger sense of deep sadness to what David Bradley as William Hartnell is able to bring to that line that he is going to have to stop doing what, is, what will be for all practical intents and purposes the last thing he does that matters. And he knows that, and he doesn't want to be irrelevant. I think part of the reason it hits me harder here is that he's not actually going to die at this moment. Because I think part of the thing with Tennant and his line, I don't want to go, is that it's playing on basically the, the usual, well, I don't want to die, because that story very much went out of its way to frame regeneration as a death. 
which I also don't love. So that's part of a factor why it doesn't work for me. Whereas this, it's a plea to not become irrelevant. Because Hartnell's not going to die, but he's going to have to keep living knowing that his time is done. And there is a much, to, for me at least, at this point in my life, a much heavier sadness to that than just the idea of, oh God, I'm afraid I'm going to die. I think the difference is the sense of what is being lost and what is being left behind, what is being undone. Because, you know, the doctor, tenant, can and did regenerate. And while ten people may continue to view that it's like he died and somebody else got to walk away, the character continues. Things continue. Hartnell doesn't get to regenerate. He only get he only has to run out his time and he wears down. And it's a lot sadder, as far as I'm concerned. If there's one moment that I do think overplays it. In this, it is the bit towards the end where he sees Matt Smith. It's kind of like he has a vision of, oh, it keeps going. Oh, look how far ahead we are. And they like have this little visual bonding moment. And it's not a bad moment. In and of itself, it it's okay. It's decently shot for a moment with no dialogue. The two actors play it well. But that is the one bit that comes off as self congratulating I almost said self-congratulatory, which sounds wrong. So self-congratulatory, there we go, uh, about the thing because it does feel like somebody who has worked on Modern Doctor Who is going, oh, thank God we continue to honor this legacy in, in a way that feels disconnected. And like, it didn't 100% work for me even at the time it aired, and it really doesn't work now that we are so far further from Matt Smith's time as the Doctor. So, it's not a complete failure of a moment, but I do think it is the one time where the production gets self-indulgent and self-congratulatory. And it's weird because it's not even being self-congratulatory about the thing it's depicting, Doctor Who of the 1960s, but instead suddenly becomes self-congratulatory of Doctor Who of the 2010s. It, it's... Uh, yeah, it's, it's an odd thing that happens, and I don't, don't really love it. But that's about the one substantive complaint that I would make about this. And I also love that the last bit of footage we actually get is of Hartnell himself delivering that iconic speech with, someday I will come back. And because it's, it's brilliant. And David Bradley recreates it very well earlier in the film, but I am glad they let the actor, William Hartnell himself, have that moment to close out the film. So that's an adventure in space and time. If you like Doctor Who at all, or if you just find behind the scenes making of uh, television or movie things interesting, and even if you don't have that much interest in Doctor Who, I still think it's worth watching. It's really good as a piece unto itself, and it's especially good if you do have an investment in Doctor Who as a property. So if you haven't seen it for crying out loud, watch it. It's not like I spoiled anything. The plot is just what happened in reality, and what's great about it is stuff that needs to be seen. It is performances. It is pacing. It is the feel and flow of the thing, and I can't relay, relay that to you in a review. So go watch it if you haven't. If you have watched it, whatever your thoughts are, drop something down in the comments. Let's talk about it all the usual stuff. Like, subscribe, share this video around. That's greatly appreciated. I have a Patreon, which helps the channel grow and uh, helps keep this whole thing going. I've also got links to other things down in the description, but you don't have to do any of it if you don't want to, because at the end of the day, you folks are the council, and I just run the meetings. And until next time, this council is adjourned.